Tranquility du Jour, February 12th, 2018. Hello there, this is Kimberly Wilson, and welcome to the 414th edition of Tranquility du Jour. Today we're chatting with returning guest Jamie Cat Callan on her latest book, Parisian Charm School. You'll hear us discuss the beauty of the details, which is a very French thing, her life on the farm. She's recently moved onto the farm in this beautiful farm, actually, in Hudson Valley. And I have a link to this great article that even came out about it. And you'll find that in the show notes. And then, of course, the art of the French flirt. Now, before we dive into our interview with the beautiful Jamie, I wanted to share a few things that are coming up. One is Costa Rica. We leave on Saturday. So if anyone is like, huh, I think I'd like to go to Costa Rica next week, would love to have you. We have two spots left, and it's an amazing group for yoga, mindfulness, and creativity. Also, those of you in the D.C. area are not too far March 1st, Pigs and Pugs Project, my nonprofit, is doing a film screening of The Last Pig. And many of you will remember hearing from the farmer and the filmmaker. Gosh, back in 2015, I did interviews with them. And anyway, so excited to do the screening. And Jean Bauer of Farm Sanctuary will be there. We'll do a Q&A at the end. And then also Charlotte the Pig. There'll be a potbelly pig there. So if you are available March 1st, in spirit or in person, would so love to have you. And there's a link to that in the show notes. Or you can go to tranquilspacefoundation.org slash the last pig. Also, a couple other retreats that are coming up. One is June, Yoga and Art in West Virginia, and then Paris, off to Paris. And we have three spots left for Penning in Paris, which is happening July 23rd through the 27th, a five-day retreat. Would love to have you. Also, I wanted to mention Year of Tranquility. We had our live event last night, and it was all about love. That's the theme for February. We talked about love of self and love of others and ways, tools and ways to make this more of a priority in our lives. And one of the key pieces that I asked our participants at the end that I thought might be helpful for all listeners, actually, to contemplate or think about is how can you be your own Valentine, right? So Valentine's Day is Wednesday. How can you be your own Valentine and or show yourself more love? And then next is choosing a relationship that you want to nurture, whether or not it's a parent, a pet, a colleague, a friend, a partner, a family member. What can you do this month to grow that relationship? And anyone who would like to join us for Year of Tranquility, you can join us at any time. If you sign up for the annual, you get 50% off mentoring, you get all these additional perks, 25% off Tranquility. And whenever you join, you get all the archives from the past also. So if you join the monthly, you can just dive into that particular month. And this month, of course, is love. Next month, by the way, is style. So anyone who's interested, I have a link to the Year of Tranquility in the show notes. And it's also at KimberlyWilson.com slash Y-O-T. Would love to have you. We have a really, really phenomenal group of women and one gentleman going through the program. Now, without further ado, Jamie Cat Callen. So she's the author of the recently released Parisian Charm School. She's also the author of the best-selling books, French Women Don't Sleep Alone, Bonjour Happiness, and Ooh La La, French Women's Secrets to Feeling Beautiful Every Day. Her books have been published in 21 countries and have been featured in major magazines, including the New York Times, Vanity Fair, and Time. She makes her home in New York's Hudson Valley at La Belle Farm, where she and her husband have created a little bit of France and grow lavender, sunflowers, and produce their own brand of French sparkling apple cider. Welcome, Jamie. Hi, Kimberly. It's nice to be on the show. Oh my gosh, it's such a treat to have you back, and I am so excited about your new book, Parisian Charm School, French Secrets for Cultivating Love, Joy, and that Certain Je ne sais quoi. 
Yes. There you go. I'm very excited. It just came out in January, and I'm so happy to be talking about it with you because you're such a, a sister Francophile. Uh, <laughs> I am. I am. And you know what's great is I saw your book when I was in Paris at W.H. Smith. Oh, yes. You mentioned that. That is very cool. Yeah, because it was December. So it was out, it sounds like, before it even hit shelves in, in America. Wow. Yeah, because the official release date was January 2nd. So somehow they they got ahead of everybody else. (laughs) Those French. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. They're so clever. (laughs) So clever. (laughs) So tell me, so you've written many books about French life, and many of which we have interviewed you about here on the show and discussed. But so tell me the motivation behind you know, for your latest book, Parisian Charm School, like, what did you feel was missing maybe in your former books that brought this one forth? Well, I particularly wanted to write this book because I just feel that we're living in really uncharming times right now. And I looked at the French and I looked at my grandmother and I just thought, it would be really nice to bring back some of these, just these very charming old fashioned things that French women have never forgotten about just, you know, etiquette and writing thank you notes and getting into conversations with your neighbors and your communities and just being, being nice and um, also being intelligent. The first chapter of the book is all about intelligence and all about the importance of reading and going to art galleries and local community events and really becoming a part of your own world. Because I think the more we engage in our own world, our neighborhood, our community and our family, the better we all are. We're just, um, you know, we're connected and we, we're, um, we become more charming basically. (laughs) Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I'm studying positive psychology right now, and there's this whole phenomenon about social contagion and how, you know, we pick up on the people around us and the people around them and on and on and on, how it's like this interesting domino effect. So what you're saying is like so aligned with the data out there also, right, that it's like we need to be more involved in our community and that it helps us feel like more connected and ultimately, as you're saying, more charming. Yes, yes. And, you know, the French have just never forgotten about that. And the women I interviewed in Parisian Charm School talk a lot about how they get into conversations wherever they go. And it is that connectedness. And, you know, um, it's the way they flirt. And I, I really wanted to talk a little bit about flirting because I have an entire chapter in Parisian Charm School on flirting. And I think It's very misunderstood in America. We tend to think that flirting is some kind of a come on or a tease, whereas the French, you know, the word flirt comes from, for the French, a conte de fleure, which literally translates as to speak or to talk like a flower, to sweet talk. But it doesn't mean that it's some sort of a tease, really, It's about making pleasant conversation. And flirtation goes on everywhere you look. I I think about my French tutor. Um, Before we moved here to the farm, I lived on Cape Cod. My husband and I lived on the Cape. And I would see her once a week. And everything she did was a kind of flirtation from arriving at her door and she would um she would actually hide behind the door sometimes she had a dragonfly door knocker and the door would be slightly ajar and I would knock on it and I'd say Madame M you know where are you and she would pop out and say boo <laughs> and it never failed to make me laugh and this was a kind of flirtation just as she always had fresh flowers a little vase of Fresh, fresh flowers on her table and the way she dressed was a kind of flirt um, she always wore something very pretty for me and I think also that's a w- the way the French charm you they don't spend a lot of money they don't have a lot of cute outfits 
but whatever they wear, they they think about it and they and they dress with care. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about like French charm, right? So you've mentioned the, you know, the flirtation and the connection to the community. And what else is it that, you know, if we were to go to your Parisian charm school, of course, by reading your book and whatnot, um, although I think it would be really fun for you to do some sort of workshop or retreat around this, um, you know, what would we learn? Like, what exactly is French charm and how do you think that we as American women or, you know, other women around the globe who are listening to this interview can embody a bit more of this French charm. You know, I, I actually, I love the idea of starting really, you know, a real Parisian charm school. That would be, you know, an amazing thing, a semester worth of classes yes. and work. <laughs> and I think, you know, some of it would be the old fashioned idea of charm school, which America, my mother's generation, they all went to charm school. And that's simply learning about speaking well, um, improving your posture, taking dance classes, learning to be um, dignified, but also of the art of conversation. But I think um, a lot of this idea of Parisian charm, it's one of the main courses I would put in my Parisian charm school would be a trip to the countryside. I would take them maybe to the south of France and talk about how the French charm comes from a closeness to nature. You know, for, for many centuries, France was primarily an agricultural society. And even if you just go a few miles outside of Paris, there's beautiful farms. And I would, in my imagined Parisian charm school, I would talk about flowers. I would talk about flower arrangements and also how to bring bits of nature into your life on an everyday basis. You know, even in the winter time, you can bring a little bit of evergreen and put it on your mantle. Like your mantle, Kimberly, is so charming. That's that's exactly what I mean by Parisian Charm School, where you have all these little things. You have your your little lights, candles, and there's just this sense that it's alive and it's it's. Um, you know, it's changing and it's and it's in the moment. And that, I think, is particularly important to charm. Well, thank you. I do love me, my mantle. <laughs> it is like, <laughs> it, it, it is just like my little altar of sorts. But, you know, one thing that's always on there is a f like a, some fresh cut flowers. And that's one of the things that you also talk about in the book, right? The importance of like having these sorts of like little charming things such as fresh flowers. So can you speak a little bit to that? The flower power, as you say. Yes, yes. The actually the French have an expression, uh, they say they put a flower on everything. And that is literally a flower, but also metaphorically a flower, which is just something pretty. So if you have this jacket that you wear all the time and it's quite old but if you were to put a little boutonnier a little uh, blue cornflower on your lapel all of a sudden it's it's you're paying attention to the season you're you're inviting uh maybe a comment or a compliment um and i think flowers are really important because they i well you know in that chapter flower power i talk about the flowers, um, the, the red poppies and the blue poppies that the French wore after World War I for Remembrance Day, which later became our Armistice Day and is now Veterans Day. But it started off as Remembrance Day in France. And I just love the, and all over the streets of Paris and, and the little villages, they're all selling these flowers. And also for Mother's Day, they sell little lilies of the valley. So there's this lovely custom of celebrating and honoring special days with fresh cut flowers. And it also keeps us in tune with the season. And, you know, when I, I talk about this in the Flower Power chapter, I visited my friend Kate and Christian in Sakla, which is a village outside of France. And he ran in a race. At the end of the race, 
all the runners were given as their sort of reward or their instead of a medal or a ribbon, they were all given a bouquet of watercress. And and that's the special um, flower vegetable that's grown in this area of France. But I just love that not only is this a pretty bouquet, but you can go home and cook it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so smart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, you know, that is one thing about France is that the flower kind of uh, – you know, all the little outdoor flower markets and, and the vegetable stands. You know, I'm always taking photos because like the carrots have like all the greenery attached. And, you know, I can just imagine like the watercress, right, as a bouquet. It's, you know, everything's just so beautifully done. And I think that's one of the things that we as Americans tend to really appreciate when we go over there. It's just the attention to detail. Exactly. And I love how you mentioned that all the greens are connected to those carrots. So I think sometimes we, you know, in our effort to, I don't know, make things more convenient, we, we kind of sterilize things and we cut off those. You know, if you think about our baby carrots, they're everything, is the, they've been peeled, they've been chopped, they've been put in a plastic bag. Um, whereas, the French don't mind a little, uh, you know, the greenery and maybe even a little dirt on their carrot because it makes it much more close to nature. And in fact, um, we're going to talk about this later, but um, my husband and I bought a farm in 2015 and we participate in our local farmer's market, which is very much like a French market. And and just recently, um, you know, we we – we don't make any money at this. We actually end up spending anything we make. We spend on buying our fellow farmer's market people there. We buy their vegetables. But this brings me to this, these radishes. There are these watermelon radishes. And recently the scale at the farmer's market was selling them. And first of all, they're beautiful and you op they're big. And then you open them up and they're pink. But I found this amazing recipe where you use all the greens too. You cook it down and you serve it on pasta, but you use everything. And I I just love that. Nothing is wasted. And those are so gorgeous. We were doing Blue Apron for a while and those showed up in one of the dishes and I was like, what in the world is this? And how have I lived my whole life without it? You know, they're so pretty. <laughs> I know. I They're just beautiful. Yeah. And I think that... Um, the French just inherently know this. Like we've, I think we've, we're a big country and we're very urban. And so we're, maybe we're a little more disconnected from the land. And I think that that's one of the most important things that the French can teach us is just to get a little bit more connected to, to our land, to our gardens, to fresh food, beautiful flowers. Well, another piece that you talk about in the book are the benefits of travel, the romance of dance, and the importance of reading. And you write, books love fresh air. And I love that. So tell <laughs> us, you know, a little bit, right? It, you know, as you say, it's like this idea of coming back to the land, of like appreciating what comes from the land versus what's in the, you know, the plastic bags at the store. So can you talk a little bit about some of these, you know, the travel, the romance of dance, the importance of reading? I see so many books there and I see so many people sitting outside in the sidewalk cafes reading an actual, like a real book. It's so refreshing. Yes. And this really um, brings me to the idea of romance. And I, I'm all for a Kindle. I'm, I don't have anything against that. But um, I, I think when you bring a real book with a real cover, especially like a big book where people can see what it is you're reading, you bring that out into the world, um, you know, it, in, it encourages conversation. And in fact, I, I write about that in the book, but recently my friend, Jessica Lee, who I always talk about in my book, she has her, her love story is in the chapter on love stories at, uh, I think toward the end of the book. Anyway, she told me that after reading the book, she went to her yoga class and she brought two books with her. No, she, I'm sorry. She brought one book with her and two men after class asked her about that book. 
So two men engaged her in conversation. Now she's not, you know, she's married and she's not interested in um, starting up some romance, but I do think it's a great example of how books encourage conversation. And then the other thing I say about the books loving fresh air, this actually, books do love fresh air. Books have their own kind of spirit. And, and this connects to the idea of flowers. So I've had, um, you know, so many books where I've, um, I read them years ago, but I save them. And then I open them up and there's a pressed dried flower inside. So, and it brings it all back to me. You know, when was I reading that book? Why did I choose to put that particular flower on that particular page? And so it's, you would, you would only have that if you read your book outside or you really connected reading with nature. So, and travel, oh my God, travel is so important because, you know, we need to change things up. And I think you understand the whole concept of chi, yes? Right. And so when you travel, say you get into a rut and you're living your life and you're going about your daily chores and your routines and you do the same thing every day, you start to see the world in the same old way. Whereas when you travel and French women, of course, travel a lot, you start to, you know, first of all, you see this new place and you, and you notice new things, and certainly it's always an education, but you return to your own life refreshed, and you see your own ordinary, simple world with new eyes. I think that's such an important piece that you just said, right? The ability to kind of get out of uh, the rut, the kind of the idea of the syndrome of rinse and repeat, you know, get up, go to work, come home, watch TV, go to bed exhausted from work, and then start again the next day. And so the ability to kind of just shake up your routine, how important that is. And, you know, for some people, it might be like, oh, I don't have the time or I don't have the resources to travel. But it really, it can be even to do a staycation, like traveling within your own town, because I'll guarantee there's something that you haven't done there yet, or a neighboring city, you know, it doesn't have to be across the Atlantic. I totally agree. And it and it can be something as simple as change your route to work, just go a different way. If you always go to the same uh, lunch place, try a different one. It's really basically about shaking things up a little bit. And yes, I love the idea of a staycation where, yeah, you go to a nearby town. So this, this idea of travel doesn't necessarily have to mean spending a ton of money. One of the things you talk about too with this is the romance of dance. And I've recently returned to ballet and I'm like so enamored as the middle-aged kind of lady running around in my litard. But I tell you, I love it. You know, and there's like piano, there's a piano player in the class. So it's just so amazing. But anyway, can you speak a little bit to the romance? Oh, and let me just tell you one more thing, Jamie. It's funny. I was re-inspired to go back to ballet after going to see Beauty and the Beast at Versailles right around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So while uh, watching it, I was like, I got to get back to ballet. But can you speak a little bit to, yeah, to the romance of dance and really how that even, you know, dancing helps women feel? Yes. Well, first of all, it's, um, you know, when you're dancing, you have more of an awareness of your body, the power of your body, the grace of your limbs and legs and your, you know, your body moving through space. And that's very, very good for us, good for men and women. And also it improves your posture immediately. So that when you're not dancing, it sh changes your body. It's not just the dancing, but it's also, you know, it, it, you take it through your entire day. And French girls are all brought up on ballet lessons. And again, not because they're all going to become ballerinas, but because it's part of learning grace, grace and form and um, self-awareness and awareness of your body in the world and appreciating your body in the world. I think sometimes we we're so busy, our, our intellect gets separated from our body and we're, you know, 
we we're very scattered so it's a way to bring it together and ballet i think particularly is a way to bring the body and the brain together because yes it's physical but also there's a discipline to it which is kind of cerebral and the lovely thing about the french and i talk about this in parisian charm school is anytime you go to a french party there's partner dancing men and women are dancing they're, the French, interestingly enough, are not that great at that kind of dance that you do on your own, you know? Like, right. Uh, they're, they're, I, they're just, they're not as comfortable at that, I think. They kind of sway. That's what I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> but when you put them together to do a partner dance, to do a salsa or a tango or a waltz or just like a rock and they call it rock and roll, but it's swing dancing. They are great and they love it. And I, you know, my husband and I just signed up for um, partner dancing. So yeah, we're doing tango and salsa and oh my God, it's so romantic. And, and just we're you know, we're holding one another. We're focused on these steps we're surrounded by people. So we can't just like stop and laugh or something or say, oh, this is silly. I'm not doing this anymore. We're in a class. We actually paid for this. We have to take this seriously. And then you, I, I mean, we, I really feel his heart beating next to me and, and, um, and I can see his eyes and I, I see him with new eyes, how, you know, how he's taking this quite seriously. And, even occasionally he steps on my foot and it's this, it's a moment of love and forgiveness. And, and it's such a beautiful thing. I highly recommend it to, to all your listeners. I love what you say too, about how it does help you get so much more in touch with your body. You know, that is a piece that is so powerful. Even, you know, today I took ballet and as I was heading home with a friend of mine, she was, you know, I mentioned to her, one of the great things about dance as a child is you're, you know, you're doing it in preparation for like a recital or something, right? But as an adult, it's more about just like enjoying and savoring the process. But it's also like you miss out on kind of that big, like, here's everything I learned, you know, but it is, it's a, it's a sweet way to get reconnected to yourself. And as you're saying with a partner. Yes. You're so lucky to take ballet. I, um, I've also been taking tap dancing lessons and my teacher said she's opening up a ballet studio this summer in my little hometown. And I can't tell you how excited I am. Oh, that's great. It's so fun. And, you know, one of the things you mentioned with regard to dancing is at dinner parties. And so can you talk a little bit, too, about the French dinner party? Because the French do love their food. Yes. Yes. Everything is centered around food, any kind of celebration. And oftentimes their, their you know, local festivals are all in honor of some food. So there's, you know, the Pruneau Festival in um, Ajan, which is all about celebrating plums and prunes and um, the garlic festival. And every town has its specialty. So again, they're very, very close to nature and to an agricultural society. And um, the dinner parties, I do want to talk about dinner parties because in all of my books, including French Women Don't Sleep Alone, Bonjour Happiness, Ooh La La, and now Parisian Charm School, I talk about the fact that the French do not date. They do not go on these one-on-one -on -one dates, but rather they're having dinner parties. And um, sometimes, well, first of all, I just want to say it's such a much better thing because you meet in a group, there's no pressure. You can see a man that you like, but you don't have to immediately you know, seal the deal in two and a half hours, um, as if, you know, which, which is sort of what you have to do on the traditional American date. But these dinner parties are not, not necessarily formal things. Sometimes they're potlucks. Sometimes they're picnics along the Seine. They're, they're, um, they're just very friendly. And yes, sometimes they are formal, but I think that Americans need to know that, 
a dinner party can be just a last minute get together where people bring something nice to eat. And at the end of it, yes, you, you know, clear away the furniture and put on some music and dance. Every single dinner party I've been to, it always ends in dancing. I love that. I love it. It, it is. It's, um, there's something, as you say, kind of very charming about that. You know, it just feels very quaint. Because honestly, if you think about how many people actually sit down for dinner these days, you know, so much less to sit down to dinner with a bunch of people. And yeah, it just sounds so luxurious. Yes, it's really lovely. I think it's important to do. And a, a lot of these things that may seem old-fashioned, sitting down to dinner, getting into conversations, dressing well, um, sending thank you notes, saying please and thank you. They do sound like something, oh, your grandmother talked about, but I think they are the things that make life worth living and charming. Absolutely. I tell you, I am so with you on all of that, and especially the thank you notes. There is nothing that means more to me. Well, okay, I shouldn't say that. But there, you know, that is a detail that means so much to me. You know, it's so important. I remember as a child, I was not able to play with my toys, or, you know, move on with a day until I had written my thank you notes, say, like around Christmas time. And it was just like, you know, it's ingrained in me. I love that. I love that. And I try to, I don't always, and I, re, or I do end up sending my thank you notes, but sometimes they're a little late, but I have to do it. I think it's, it's just one of these simple, gentle, lovely things that's very much appreciated in this world because people don't even get, you know, letters in the post anymore. And when they get a, a thank you note, they're thrilled. It's such a treat to see handwriting on a let on, on an envelope, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my gosh. Yes, it still happens. <laughs> now, Jamie, a little switch, but I'm curious, you know, you mentioned living on a farm with your husband, which, by the way, the New York Times article about you guys is the cutest, sweetest thing ever. Thank you. And um, listeners, I'll put a link to that. It just recently came out and it's so sweet about how they met. And so can you chat a little bit about like this transition from Cape Cod to a farm and, you know, the acclimation? Yes. Well, we lived um, in Woods Hall in Falmouth, uh, Massachusetts on Cape Cod for about 10 years. My husband was a scientist at Woods Hall Oceanographic. And um, truthfully, he had some health issues, so he decided um, to retire early and fulfill this lifelong dream of being a gentleman farmer. And he's taken all of that science and all the knowledge that he has, and he, he was always a great gardener, and we found this beautiful, beautiful farm in the Hudson Valley. It was built in 1820. It has the iconic red barns. We've got chickens and turkeys and um, a, a bunch of beautiful apple trees. And we're making our own sparkling hard apple cider and we make lots of jam and we um, jar tomatoes and pickles and uh, sauerkraut and then we're at the farmer's market all during the summer and for me although I I'm really I say I'm the farm wife or I'm a farm fan <laughs> for me I've fallen in love with this world I think because of its connection to France and to Paris and yeah to the idea of old-fashioned charm I can totally picture your environment, too, because, you know, we have been looking for a farm at sort of property. And I love the Hudson Valley. I tell you, there's so many beautiful properties there. And that red barn is just like, I don't know, somehow that just seals the deal, doesn't it? You're like, oh, my gosh, it has the red barn. <laughs> it's I just that's the first thing I noticed when we came up here. And I was like, I love this barn and some of the uh building we have a number of buildings they predate the 1800s because they're hand hewn logs so it's like really old 
Um, so Kimberly, you have to come visit us. Yes, it sounds amazing. Well, you know, I was thinking, I was like, ah, unless you're using the barn for something else, that would be the cutest workshop space for Parisian Charm School. Oh, I would love it, but it has to be renovated. So if if everybody out there buys one copy of Parisian Charm School, I will have enough money to renovate the writer's studio, the Parisian Charm School, and um, I'll have classes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's a deal. Now, so okay. one last thing, um, Jamie, I'm curious, you talk about charming your partners. And I, I'm curious if you have any suggestions on ways for people who are a wanting to maybe up their romance or, you know, who are new to uh, even, you know, maybe not don't even have a partner, but it's like thinking of, oh, how can I do some sweet, charming things with my next partner? Well, I think, um, first of all, um, and I write about this in Parisian Charm School, is to not, um, is to take care of the relationship, whether it's a new relationship or you've been married for many, many years. And by that, I mean to wear things that are charming, to listen, to be self-aware. And I think dancing, which we talked about a little bit, is really lovely for a romance. And I think for the um, listeners who do not have someone special in their life right now, I would say that idea of travel is really important. And the idea of changing up things that are have become routine in your life. Because I think sometimes where... Um, you know, we, we get into our routines and we're not aware that actually love is right in front of us, but we need to go somewhere else and come back to really see it. And sometimes we find love while we're traveling. And a number of the women that I interviewed for Parisian Charm School told me love stories. And they're in the book about how when they were traveling, they met that special person. And sometimes it's uh, it's about going to a conference or learning something new. And it, it really is about sort of moving your chi around. That's where romance is. It's getting a little bit out of your comfort zone. And then also for a relationship that's established, and this is very French, but delicious food, making something lovely for your mate is a wonderful way to encourage romance and and a little joie de vivre. Love it. Love it. And, you know, a question I always love to ask, and I'm sh- I am know I've asked you this before, but it'll be nice to see how it's transitioned over the years, is the name of this podcast is Tranquility Du Jour. So now that you are on a farm, how do you find tranquility in your everyday? Oh, well, you know, um, honestly, I I found a lot of it with my kitties. <laughs> I um, I I love going for walks on the farm, and I found that. Um, well, I have to tell you, Mister Pickles, the original Mister Pickles, who moved here with us, an orange tabby kitty, passed away last year. And I was very, very sad. But before he passed away, he would go on walks with me. And I used to take lots of photographs of him. And that really gave me this sense of tranquility because I saw the world through his eyes. And so now we have two new kitties, Mr. Mustache and Inspector Pickles. And... um, we're going to let them go outside in the spring. And I, I would expect that they will bring me some tranquility. And, and that said, there's just a very simple thing that I do, which is I take the time in the morning to, um, I stay in bed for a little while. And, and this is partly because, you know, I am a femme de certain age and I don't have to run off to a job and to work, which I did for many, many years. But for me, um, staying in bed, my husband brings me coffee and I journal. And that really, really um, helps launch my day in a very, very sweet, gentle way. Beautiful. I love that. And um, 
You know, that's so in line with, I think, this idea, particularly around charm and this idea of really getting to know yourself, becoming more self-aware and, you know, being able to kind of shine brightly. And I think whenever we're able to journal and reflect, it gives us that opportunity to kind of be our best selves out in the world. Yes, because then once I've, you know, I've found my balance and I've, I've, I'm ready for my day, then I'm actually very social and I get into conversations with everyone and I, I always try to wear something that's charming. But the only way that works is because first I take time to center and balance myself in the morning. Last thing, Miss Jamie, you are currently on book tour. And I was looking at your dates. And I'm like, when is she coming to DC? And I don't think you have anything yet scheduled for this area. Do you? Oh, well, I I am working on coming to Baltimore in July. So um, I hope I hope I will make it to DC around that time. And so I will let you know because I'm I'm going to be in Baltimore for most of July because my daughter is expecting her second baby. So I I will be down your way. And um if you could tell me a bookstore that I should approach in Washington, DC, I will do that. And for other events, I'm going to be in Los Angeles on Sunday, February twenty-fifth at Diesel Books in Brentwood. I'm in Connecticut at the Yale Bookstore on March 3rd. That's in New Haven. And um, March 23rd, I'm at the Norwalk Library. I'm at RJ Julia. Um, Let's see, that is on March 2nd. Great. And RJ Julia at Wesleyan University in Middletown. And there's a few others, but... um, and I will I will find out about Washington, D.C. for you. Yeah, we'd love to have you. No, it can't be while I'm in Paris, though, which is like mid-July. So oh. Oh, <laughs> we, okay. I'll coordinate right. with you. Um, but we would we, love we to have you. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk. But yeah, listeners, I'll have a link to her various events so that you guys can find her kind of all over the States. And will you be doing anything abroad? Like, will you be in Paris this year and doing anything maybe at W.H. Smith or Shakespeare and Company? I am in talks with the American Library in Paris to do an event in September and WH Smith will be um coordinating with it. So they'll they'll sell books, but the event will be at the um American Library in Paris and that's September, but I don't have the specific date yet. Okay, perfect. That sounds so lovely. Well, thank you as always, Jamie. I love your new book. I'm so proud of you. And again, when I saw it in Paris in December, I was so excited. You know, what's funny is even my boyfriend pulled it out. He's like, look at this book. I was like, oh my God, that's Jamie. Yes, I'm in talks with her. We're going to get her back on the show. So it was so funny. He (laughs) found your book first and was like, hey, look at this. (laughs) It's a beautiful book. I just, I really love the book. I, um, Uh, it's penguin random house and i think they did an amazing job and i love my illustration and yeah i'm i'm very very happy yeah it looks great it really reflects i think the uh the material inside so beautifully done and as always thank you so much for being on the show and for sharing all your great fodder and i wish you the very best with parisian charm school and i can't wait for your upcoming workshop slash (laughs) retreat me too thank you kimberly it was a pleasure You can find Jamie online all over. So her website, jamiecatcallan.com. Of course, on Facebook at Parisian Charm School, on Instagram at jamiecatcallan, and on Twitter at jamiecatcallan. Also, there's a link in the show notes to a few things that I referenced or that we discussed in this interview. First off is her last time she was on the show, which was 2013. And I have a link to that podcast interview if you're interested in listening or re-listening. Also, a New York Times book review mentions her beautiful book. Also, a New York Times article about her and her husband. And this just came out at the end of January, so it's fresh. And then again, another really sweet article about her farmhouse with some gorgeous photos. And it's funny because I had no idea. Like, I saw that 
Jamie was taking photos and it seemed like she had this farm or life maybe going on, but I didn't realize that she'd moved to Hudson Valley and she was basically doing what I am dreaming of having a touch of in my life. And so it was so sweet to be able to chat with her about her experience. Also on social media, you can find me over on Instagram. I recently posted a photo of a bunch of images that I pulled that I culled from these great magazines I picked up in Seattle. And as I was pulling together images for my vision board, and then also you can pen along with me on Pinterest. I'm there from time to time. Of course, on Facebook at Tranquility Du Jour. Twitter at Kimberly Wilson, and then YouTube at Tranquility Du Jour. Tranquility, I wanted to mention our locally sewn eco-friendly clothing line. We are doing the spring shoot on Friday. Two new colors. One is called Eclipse. So it's this beautiful, dark, rich, navy midnight. And then also emerald, emerald green. And then we have four new designs. So I look forward to sharing those with you. And you'll hear more and about that and see those over the next couple of weeks on the blog, KimberlyWilson.com. Then there's also links to my five books, perusing my FAQs. Those of you who may be new to Tranquility Du Jour, there's a bunch of e-courses that I've produced over the years, really with this idea of how do I find more tranquility in my daily life. Read about my passion for animals and my apologies if you hear the two of them snoring on my lap and then there's one next to me under a blanket. So we we joke that we're like this pig or this pug zoo at this point. We're just surrounded by three pugs, one cat, two adults and 600 square feet. And then also if you would like a little dose of tranquility and inspiration in your inbox every couple of weeks, you can sign up for Love Notes at KimberlyWilson.com slash love notes and it gives you access to tranquil treasures which is a treasure trove of all sorts of mp3s and pdfs and additional inspiration and then finally if you have a moment to pin a review on itunes about this show i'd be so grateful and or to share this podcast with friends via social media would love that and also if you have a moment to pin a review of any of my books on Amazon or Goodreads. I have a link to both of those and would be super duper grateful. Uh, Thank you, as always, for tuning in. I hope you loved this interview as much as I did, and I wish you a phenomenal Valentine's Day and a delightful week ahead. Namaste. (laughs) 